Let's get this. Let's get this going. Um, so I'm here with Chapel, with Courtney, and Carter, and um, you guys are from Athens, yes. right? And you've been touring recently. Just released a new album, Sunday Brunch. Yes. Um, how's the reception been for that? Incredible. Way honestly, like a lot better than Carter and I both expected. Like we've been sitting on these songs for about like a year or two, and we were just so ready to get them out. But I don't know, the response has been yeah very welcoming. It was it's been super good. I think I was just like worried that I don't know when you sit on songs for so long, you're worried that it I don't know you overthink everything. But it's been great, and every day it's just growing. So it's yeah. it's good. It's awesome. It's great. Um, yeah. kind of tied into the album. Um, something that I've been wanting to ask. Since that came out, is who is that bitch, Cindy White? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, good question. Thank you. No one, why has no one question. asked that yet? Yeah, that's good. Right? Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, really? I don't know how this is going to be perceived, but you know what? This is what it was written about, and no one told me I can't say it. So, yeah. um, I was in Denver, Colorado, three years ago, and I found this. Um, I was playing a show in this old band. And I got on the bus, and somebody brought like a couple things of marijuana because it's legal there. <clears throat> and then uh, they had this one called, it was this one string called that bitch Cindy White. <laughs> Swear to God. And I smoked it, and I was dancing in the van for at least three and a half hours just to like the same song over and over again. And I, f- I remember just feeling so good, and then also being like, that phrase is so cool. And so when we were writing, I was like, and I remember that story, someone brought it up, and I was like, that'd be cool to like write a love song about that. And so yeah. Cindy White, which is just weed. So that's what that song's about, yeah. actually. Yeah. Man. I sat there just thinking, like, yeah. oh, what is that? Oh, mean? I know. I don't think it's a person. I'm like, who hurt you? I'm like, no one. Yeah, I was thinking, like, I was like, it's got to be metaphors. I'm like, C white. What is this? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was like, mm. people think it's cocaine. I'm like, no. Yeah, that's no, no. The, that was, Everybody thinks it's cocaine. Oh, it's, yeah. Unfortunately, no, it's weed. I'm boring. So. <laughs> so, other like other songs, how do you fit um, a slow song like. Um, um, see you again. Like, how do you fit a slow song like that? Where do you? How do you choose where to put that on an album that's pretty up tempo? Like, where do you <coughs> slot that? How do you make that decision? I think that one was the weirdest one to place. I felt like um, I always wanted Full School to end. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even want it on it. Um, but if it was gonna end, it'd be the last one. And I feel like See You Again bridges that emotionally because they're, they're both emotional songs. And I think always it's good to have emotional songs at the end. For obvious reasons, mm-hmm. um, but I think that's why we decided to. And Don't you love me? It's kind. Of, it was like everything in the beginning is like kind of feel good, and then towards the middle it gets more heartfelt, and then at the end it's like definitely like deeper. And I think that's kind of how we are personality-wise. We're goofy people, but there's a little heart underneath it, and it doesn't really shine until later on when we get to know us. Yeah. So. Beautifully said. Oh, thanks. Giving back. Oh, man. Oh. Well then. Anyway, why didn't you want Fool's Gold um, on there then? I don't know. I think, well, at the time, like two years ago, we, me and her did a bunch of demos, and that didn't make this EP. And Fool's Gold stuck around because our management liked in like a lot of other people. And then when we started writing more like Monogamy and Don't You Love Me and stuff like that, it just didn't really fit the sound. But I think why we kept it on there is because emotionally it was cool and like a lot of people like or into it so yeah, I, think, I feel like that's a lot of people's like favorite song yes yeah, it, was, it got me it was one got me it was, really yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people are said the same thing and so what decided is like the verses are kind of weird like all the other stuff we have so i was like okay well it's mm-hmm. fine i guess if we have it out there yeah but and i feel like as like a, as an ending like closing out the album i feel like it does a really good job of i don't know just being like that super like kind of passive like just emotional just kind of in your face to all. Yeah, know. I think it's our fun. whole EP is basically like going out and drinking for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Where you start off late as fuck and you start get emotional and you start crying. Yeah. And then, uh, then you go to bed. And then you're just an angry mess. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Alright, so Sunday brunch is a metaphor for like oh, a night out. Uh, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah, yeah. Nice. I think yeah. we're now realizing Right? Music. Cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Taking this all down one song at a time. Oh. So, what is y'all's uh, favorite song, new song to play, uh, to play live? What's at least lately. Um. My, I have two favorites. So Monogamy is probably my like all-time favorite to play because it's so like groovy. I think that's really um, good. But my other favorite and least favorite at the same time would be Cindy White, just because it's like it's so fun and like the most technical song, but it's the most exhausting. So, I bet. So it's just constant. <laughs> and, I don't know. I feel like by that time in our set, we're like we're really tired. into it, yeah. but like also like starting to get on that. Side yeah, usually we're singing by we're like, shit, we have so much more to do. Yeah, we're like, here's a big one, let's do it. <laughs> but, no, that's fun. What about for you? Um, 
I would say mine's Don't You Love Me. It's my favorite one. It means the most to me. And then I like... No, I think that's it. No, I, I really like doing that song. You like Soul. I like, I you like Soul. I like Soul. I like those that's two. That's fine. I like the yeah. Toms. Oh, yes. yes. Me too. That's, that's really fun. I agree on that. Whenever the chorus comes in, I'm like, oh, hell. Yeah, so, no, I like it. You, yeah. You're not, like, predicting the, the chorus to really be Tom's at yeah. first. That's why I enjoyed that. Soul is honestly probably one of my, like, I think my favorite song on the EP, though, just because of how we, like, wrote it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had, what, we had, like, a couple <coughs> little parts of it, but not, we had nothing close to the full song, and Carter and I just, like, got in the studio, spent a month just, like, focused on this one song and just... Pretty much like wrote it to you, I guess. It, but yeah, I don't know. I it's, feel like it shows like exactly who we are. Yeah. yeah. That's painful. I agree. Yeah, that kind of ties into the uh, next thing I was gonna ask is, is I, like, I've asked this question before, and everyone's heard this about like songwriting processes. But for you guys, it, like, it really does seem interesting because it's just you two. Yeah. But like, there's so much more sound. So how yeah. does that song kind of build? Oh, like songwriting in general for us. Yeah, just um, how do songs just come together for you guys? It's usually I do I do all the demos and I'll do like all the like the synths and stuff like that and get like a rough idea and I usually do always floor on the floor drums mm -hmm. just because they're easy and then I send them to Courtney and then she comes up with her own drum parts and sometimes those drum parts make me change around synth parts and it's usually we used to live together too so where like I would email her stuff she go downstairs and like play drums but. That's kind of how we do stuff. It's usually just, and it's easy just being us two, and we get along, yeah. and we know what we both want, and it's the same thing. And we tend to not like overthink the writing process. I don't know. With we all used the to songs, not be like that. Yeah, with all the songs that we, you know, have recorded on the EP, like, <coughs> sorry, it was just like he had a demo, he sent it to me. I like had my stuff. I had like mentally what I wanted to change and that type of thing. Yeah. And then. Like, we never really like, practiced or like ran through it. We just got in the studio oh, and then just like started yeah. fresh and just built it up and it yeah. just, just kind of came out. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. Really, like, right. organically, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's back to the title Sunday Brunch. Yeah. Where did your love of brunch and <laughs> breakfast foods come in? Because I see it's in your, your videos and it is. Your oh, the yeah. album art and just. I think it, it was deciding who we were as a band. It kind of started off as a joke. It was a joke, yeah. and it was more like, I was like, let's just call it this, and then it was just like, kind of like, nah, we couldn't. And then, we thought more about who we are as people. Me and Courtney are like, even though we're like, we're in our early teens, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we're we're <laughs> growing, 14 year old. Although yeah. we're growing up, there's this like, graduated middle school. there's this thing about our music and us as people, is this like college fratty kind of thing, so I was just like, and we always used to just drink and write and stuff like that, and I think... Mm -hmm. I don't know, Sunday Brunch, when I heard it at first, it was, like, funny, and then I was like, this kind of sounds like some shit. Yeah, it just kind of, like, fell off the tongue, I feel. Yeah, so we just yeah. chose it. It just, it just felt right. It, it matches who we are personality-wise. <laughs> and it's yeah. awesome, because there's so... We didn't even realize at the time how much we could do with breakfast. Yeah, we just brunch. thought it was, like... like yeah. We're like, oh, well, you know, it's a cool name. We can do a couple things here and there, but, like... The, like the idea is just keep like spilling out of things. Yeah, like, so y'all did like a Sunday brunch thing in like Colorado. Dude, that was yeah, awesome. That was yeah. We were not expecting that. We we did it because that show was canceled, and then we thought like maybe like we a few kids thing, would so. come, and then yeah. it was a good amount of kids outside. We're like, oh shit, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, we should have worn I hop. Let's go to the next one. Definitely should have called ahead. They were not very happy. <laughs> <laughs> they were pissed. There was like 30, yeah. 40 people there, which was amazing. But we had to oh. end up waiting like forty five minutes for a section to be clear about. No, that's oh, true. That's incredible. That was fun, so, fun. Yeah. so I guess maybe other than that IHOP, what's the best brunch? Like in the in the country, in the world. Oh, you say Ant's house for you. Yeah, I've definitely so I actually work at a breakfast slash lunch place uh, back in Holland, Michigan. And it's the seat of it is like a sixty style diner and everything's just like super fresh, like local, uh, grown and all that stuff. Yeah. And I don't know, that's by far like my What's favorite. What's that place called again? Anna's house. Oh, Anna's house. Woo woo. <laughs> um, my only complaint though oh is that God, they man. don't have their liquor license. So they uh, need to get mimosas. mimosas. That's oh. the only thing I keep bugging them about. Damn. But Oh uh, mine is basic. There's this place called Jay Christopher's. <laughs> In, in Decula, <laughs> there's no liquor, but it's just good breakfast. Oh, yeah. And I usually go there every Sunday if I'm in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, you're already pretty like well known and stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah. and you got all this touring and stuff like that. Are you still able to keep up with YouTube channel at all and do stuff, or is that unfortunately something that's... no? But that's <clears throat> definitely been like a huge like weight on me. I guess like I'm constantly wanting to, and I feel really bad because I like for a while there I had like 
a lot of growth and like I don't know, fans were like constantly asking me like on my social media, they're like, new covers, new covers, like when you put anything out? But I don't know, like just based off the videos that I've done in the past, like it's just so much, and I mean, I'm just like making a little bitch ass excuse, but like so much like time and money, obviously. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the past like year has been filled with like chapel stuff, and yeah. a lot of our focus and energy has been put into that. Um, yeah. But I definitely plan to continue as soon as I like get myself more like established I guess yeah. into a I don't know place to be able to do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so there's one song from like this past year that you could guess come out this year that you really loved that you could cover what would you like throw up a cover of Ooh, that's just... so hard actually no um I was listening to it last night actually and I was like damn I really wish I could cover this like right now um it would be Silence by Khalid and Marshmallow it's, be cool. it's such a jam, and I love the groove of it, I love the tempo, and I don't know. One of my favorite things is to like play along to like the melodies and lyrics, and that's just like, I don't know. I, like, I was like playing it in my head, and I was like, this would be so perfect. Yeah, but. so yeah. So my best friend is the drummer for Ida Victor, opened up for you guys, okay. for Amorosa yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. he wanted me to ask you, what are your drum influences on? Oh, uh, kind of first, first one that comes to mind is Matt Grimer, <coughs> of course. Grew up just like falling in love with his playing style. Um, definitely the biggest like inspiration and influence to me. Um, now happens to be like one of my close buzz, which is awesome. awesome. He's like the nicest, sweetest dude ever. Um, yeah, Chris Coleman is another one, and uh, Aaron Spears. You know, just all the greats, man. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so um, just like. To tie it all up, what's um, what's coming up? What's in the future for Chapel? Like, um, is for this tour and beyond? Just what's? I, I think after this tour, we're gonna sleep, and then, <laughs> um, sleep. and then uh, we gotta write the record, so we have to mm -hmm. we have to work the next two months. I, I know we're going to LA and doing that, and then we we have some tours in the works in the spring. Um, but that's all I know for right now. And I think, I don't know. My main my main focus is the next record, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna start that next week. So. Yeah. I am. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to be very, very yeah. busy. Yeah, oh yeah, you can do that <laughs> while we're yeah, yeah. yeah, lots of writing, lots of just new stuff. Get yeah. a couple more videos out, hopefully yeah. pretty oh, soon. Yeah. So. yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, guys. It's really yeah. nice seeing you guys. Thank you.